Okay, so basically, um, these are the, some of the topics that we're going to be looking at today. Um, so we're basically giving you a warm welcome. We're going to talk about how COVID has affected the programme. A little bit about Agile College, what SWAP actually is and its entry requirements and the universities that you're able to apply to. A wee bit of information about the programme content and then we're going to hear from our students and see what they, they've found from their experience of being a student last year and a current student. Uh, we're going to look at progression routes and we're going to be looking at UCAS, student support services, a financial assistance, a bit about the student association and then an opportunity for you to uh, answer questions, ask and answer questions. Okay, so welcome future nurses. Today is your first step in a possible career in nursing. This could be you. Okay, so it's quite an exciting um, evening uh, where you're able to get a wee bit of information uh, about your first step into nursing. So introducing ourselves, uh, my name's Margaret Eccles. Um, worked as a, a qualified nurse having trained in the Royal Liverpool Hospital. Um, I manage various uh, units. Uh, my main interest being around oncology um, and palliative care. Um, so the background uh, of your lecturers is actually in nursing. So we've been there, we've worked within the role um, and we keep ourselves updated to what's going on now. And uh, my name is Linda Brown. And believe it or not, once upon a time, quite a long time ago, actually, not I was going to say not so long ago, but actually it is a wee bit a while ago, I used to be exactly where you were. Okay, so everything that you're feeling just now, I 100% empathise with you because I actually, once upon a time, was a swap student. Um, so I qualified as an adult nurse and I attended Edinburgh Napier University. I then did my postgrad at Dundee University for my teaching qualification. Um, my nursing career started off uh, in medical admissions and uh, rehabilitation. I then kind of thought, wow, I fancy surgical. So I went on and did that for a wee while. But when I started the teaching, um, I kept my skills up by working for care of elderly. I particularly am very interested in advanced dementia. And I moved to Argyle just over a year ago. Uh, and uh, I've absolutely loved uh, working for Argyle and uh, living here as well has been absolutely amazing. If ever you felt the need to get in touch with us, we've got um, a contact detail there, but you can always get in touch with your local centre as well. So we've been working uh, within restrictions, as has everybody, around COVID-19. Um, we, as a college, have risen to the challenges. Um, so our teaching has been ongoing, although it's been slightly different in that the centres have been closed, so we've been working from home. Um, but the plan is uh, to return to learning um, in September with our centres now opening. Um, and we do ask for support and cooperation from uh, all of our students uh, to maintain the health and well-being of all our students, staff or visitors to the centres. Um, that is a high priority for Argyle College. Um, so while we'll be continuing uh, to follow the government guidelines, um, we will be following those guidelines and it depends what happens in between as to whether we do or don't return to um, our colleges uh, in September. Um, and it may be that we um, continue as we have been, but hopefully not. Uh, things are moving forward and certainly good news today on that front. So we're going to ask Linda just to tell you a little bit now about our Gal College uh, and the actual delivery of the course. Okay, so our Gal College is based across a variety of centres, and uh, you probably wonder, you know, how do we manage to teach access to nursing across so many centres? Well, we use the video classroom uh, as the way 
of uh, reaching out to all different parts of Argyll, and that has worked very successfully. And this is the second year uh, that the Access Nursing Programme has been running at Argyll, Co Argyll College. What I would say is that when the COVID restrictions actually came into effect a year ago, which seems unbelievable, it's been on that long, what I would say is that access to nursing made that adjustment very well because we were already used to a video classroom environment. The only real difference was we were doing it from our own home. So it's quite it's quite nice. I quite like to see um, quite a variety of students eh, from across um, and the, the islands and across mainland eh, that are interested in that. Um, we tried to have some uh, practical days, but we've not managed to do that this year uh, as of yet. Uh, and there's been some virtual study skills days, which the students have really benefited from as well. Um, from some of the universities are offering that, so our students are engaging with that as well. So you're probably wondering, what is SWAP? Well, SWAP is, it stands for Scottish Wider Access Programme. And basically, it's been around since the 1970s. Um, SWAP has, was seen as a gateway uh, to get people from uh, unemployment back into education. So it has been aimed at people with very little or no qualifications. Um, the Scottish Wider Access Programme for Access to Nursing uh, is a gateway basically for adult nursing, mental health nursing, learning disability nursing and child nursing. But I put in big bold there, not midwifery. Okay, so if midwifery is one of your choices, if, if that's what you really want to be, it would be a completely different program that we would encourage you to go on to because this would not be the correct route for that. So Sports West is in partnership between colleges and university. Uh, and the Swap West bit for nursing is the reason why they have the difference between Swap East and Swap West is basically for demographics. Nursing is a very popular choice, uh, and we find that people really need to be able to go and be able to learn and actually attend placements within their demographics. So they divided so the East and the West. So there are specific universities for the East and specific for the West. Our director for Swap Waste is his name Kenny Anderson, and he has many people to work with him as well. Uh, and we get to meet them uh, during the course of the year. They're very, very supportive of our students. Now, the entry requirements are, you know, can be a bit of a gray area. But what I would say to you is that, you know, if if you're in doubt, put an application in, and we can look at it. If we feel you do not meet the SWAP criteria, we'll do our best to suggest an alternative programme for you. But basically, we're looking for people who have been out of education for three plus years. So, for example, if you've studied to standard grade, old grade, level five, not five, then three years out of education uh, would be acceptable. If you um, have studied at higher level or HNC or degree, a, it has to be a minimum of five years gap. So again, it's a wee bit different. People tend to find that they would want to put down as many qualifications as possible a, to, to do a programme, whereas the ethos for SWAP is to get people who have never, a, for whatever reason, get the qualifications they needed to go to university. So it's a bit like a second chance, a second opportunity to a, become university ready in one academic year. Now, the universities that you're able to apply to are the universities of Highlands and Islands. And Catherine, uh, who was my student last year, she can tell you all about that at some point during this evening. Um, there's uh, that basically, University of Highlands and Islands is for basically adult and mental health branches. Glasgow Caledonia, they offer it for all branches that you can articulate to. Um, University of Waste of Scotland, it's for adult and mental health. Stirling University is for adult and mental health, and Robert Gordon University is child nursing only. The purpose of the course is it better prepares you for study at university level. It's very challenging, but very rewarding. It builds your confidence, self-belief, 
self-esteem. And I would say that one of the things that, you know, one of the many things that our students all have in common is they all want to be nurses, but they all lack, also they lack confidence. They lack that self-belief. They need their self-esteem built up. Although it does prepare you academically, it also helps you to get other things in order, like childcare, employment, different things like that. So it gives you sort of a, a trial run, a full time education that again will help to support your easily your ease of progression to university. Margaret's going to go through the program details with you um, for the next couple of slides. So we're just going to try and give you an idea of the type of units that are chosen uh, for this program uh, with the aim of preparing you for the demands of university um, and also for, for taking you for maybe from uh, being in a position where you don't have qualifications or maybe you've missed some areas of study, um, particularly regarding um, kind of grounding subjects. Um, so the course lasts for one academic year. It is de delivered via uh, video conferencing. Uh, there are students in different um, areas, different centres, um, and your tutors are in different centres too. So I'm based in Danoon and Linda's based in Loch Gilpad. So we have 18 units of study. Um, which we do over two semesters and the semesters last for 17 weeks each. Um, and it requires about 20 to 40 hours of study for each unit. So the units for the coming year uh, haven't been fully agreed. They do change slightly sometimes. Uh, that mainly goes uh, with feedback. Um, and maybe specific areas that we think need to be addressed or changed. Um, so just to give you some idea of the unit contents of the course. Um, so we have a unit around uh, medical terminology. Um, and as an, ex as an example, we do have units whereby you can choose uh, one or another. So it could be medical terminology, um, it could be HIV, Hep B, or um, it could be another unit um, of a particular choice. So we cover first aid or stress, stress management. Um, we cover the human body, um, which gives you uh, an insight into uh, biology. And when I said about the grounding units, we do the NC communication, uh, numeracy, um, and your ICT. So they all help you with your studies, health promotion, mental health and introduction, caring for people with dementia helps you specialise into a very topical unit at the moment. Um, health safety protection issues brings in legislation, legislation that underpins practice. And then we look at care units of values and principles, the human development and behaviour, which brings in uh, psychological theories and our social influences that brings in sociological theories. Prevention of infection and the preparation for your higher education, your Swap West Prep. So on top of that, we also have some compulsory practical days and we have our swap study skills days. Those dates are confirmed um, once they've been arranged for that year. So usually in, within each semester, we have an opportunity whereby we all come together. Um, obviously, we have had restrictions with uh, COVID this year, so that hasn't uh, happened. It did happen the previous year. Um, and we use those opportunities to carry out uh, practical assessments, but we also use them as an opportunity to come together um, as a group 
when we all come together from all the centres uh, and we usually do kind of lunch and uh, some other activities that are quite fun and we just get a chance to actually speak with each other. It's always it's got to involve lunch, doesn't it, Margaret? Got to involve lunch, good food. Yep. So we have Swap West to provide uh, some of the bespoke uh, study days. Can we just go back a sec, Linda, yes, Sally? Yes. Um, they're usually carried out in the spring and we do stress that attendance at these practical days and these study skill days, it is compulsory. Um, they can change because of COVID-19, but we do try to offer something else instead. Um, we had support from uh, the Royal College of Nurses this year um, who have put on study days specifically um, around specific areas, so one of which was dementia. And again, we encourage people to attend um, to get the full benefit uh, out, of the, uh, out of the course. OK, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to let our previous and our current students kind of say a couple of things about the programme. It'd be really useful um, to hear from Catherine first. Now, Catherine, she's from the class of 1920 and she's currently studying adult nursing at University's Highlands and Islands. So thank you so much, Catherine, for joining us. Could you tell us a wee bit more about your experience and what you think the students, uh, the, the new students would like to hear? Hi, um, I would definitely recommend this course it gave me a huge amount of confidence and it really does prepare you for university um a lot of us definitely felt like we had a leg up already when we started so it's really beneficial and a lot of support from the tutors last year thank you very much and we also have a current student amanda who's kindly joined us as well. So Amanda, what's been your experience been like so far? Because you've been under the sort of the COVID-19 restrictions from the very start. So what's that been like for you? Um, I've enjoyed it. It hasn't bothered me not being able to go into a centre um, to, to be at college. Um, because we were already under restrictions when this course started this year, everything has just been done from home. Um, some of our topics did change. Um, but that hasn't been an issue. We just weren't able to get into centres to be able to do the practical days this year. Um, I, th I think, although it will probably be different next year, um, hopefully restrictions will ease enough so people can get into their centres. You don't really feel like you're missing out on anything, though, because it's been like this from the start. So you don't know any different. Um, it's some, I would definitely recommend it, though. It's a lot more challenging than I thought it was going to be. And at some times you do feel like you're juggling an awful lot. But at the end of the day, all it's going to do is benefit you for going to university or any other course that you decide to go on afterwards. Thank you very much. Really appreciate that input. Um, it is a very, I can speak as a previous student myself from many years ago, um, you know, it's it's been it's a very rewarding. I'm very passionate about teaching access to nursing. Uh, it's a course that I really get behind and believe that it does a lot of good, uh, and it gives you a lot of opportunities that you never thought was was ever possible. So the progression routes. So access to nursing will lead you on to study a, a degree in nursing. Some years though, you might find well actually, I think it would like another year at a college environment. So that you might decide to go the HNC route. Currently at Argyle College, we offer HNC social services, which is also a progression route a from access to nursing if you wish to study, especially likes of learning disability branch of nursing and adult nursing as well in particular. Um, it also uh, helps to sort of with your employment. So again, you know, most of our students do work. A, and study at the same time. And a, they find that, you know, being on this course, a, going on their CV helps them to get part time employment that helps to support them a, throughout a, their education, which is really quite important because they can get hands on experience as well. A, so UCAS stands for the University and College Admissions Service. 
Now, applications are usually made from about November, but me being me, I always start early. Isn't that right, Amanda? I think I started just in September this year, uh, just to sort of yes. balance out, because it's amazing how quick time goes by. You know, you know, you start off in August and you think, gosh, you know, the UCAS deadlines in January, that seems like years away. And it, before you know it, it's upon us. So I started very early and every month I give students another task to do to help support the UCAS application. And um, basically, as I mentioned at the beginning, there are five swap waste universities that you can apply to uh, and they will guarantee to look at your application um, in regards to your chosen branch of nursing. So it's quite an exciting time. It's nerve wracking. What do you think, Amanda and Catherine? How was the UCAS process for you? For me, it's been it seems like it's been going on forever. Because <laughs> it has. <laughs> it doesn't. It, when did I put, I think I, our applications went in in December, just before the December break. And we had we've had some interviews already this year. We're still waiting on more, I think, um, for other universities. But it, it just, it's a lot of waiting. I'm having to learn to be more patient than I like. It's very, um, <laughs> it's, that in itself is quite stressful, but it's, it's worth it in the end. I think we were the same last year. And I think you had a start pretty early and we were all thinking, God, it's so far away that we're actually going to be sending our applications. But it comes up on you so fast, you don't even realise it. And it definitely helps having so much support from yourself because it's not a necessarily easy process. So I think you definitely made it easier. Okay, good. Good to hear that. That's <laughs> so the progression criteria, um, it's important to note that progression to on other programmes, it's not guaranteed. OK, although um, SWAP students are looked upon favourably. And I would like to say that every single student from last year has had been offered and progressed onto university uh, this current year. So it's quite exciting that um, you're just about through your first year at, at university. So very, very good. So the, what you need to do is you be, need to be able to pass the full programme. So all the units have to be passed. Uh, and that includes the prep for HE unit. Now, the prep for HE unit that Margaret was speaking about is a swap unit. And it basically it helps to support your study skills. Uh, that it's really good. The universities really like you to complete that as part of the criteria. You need to have a satisfactory reference. From, I usually write them, but it's a team approach. Um, I, you know, I speak with the full teaching team and I get their perspective on it. And then I collate one big, lovely reference for you. Um, universities are also looking for a good attendance report. So they're looking at it to be at least 90 percent and a profile grade. Um, now, a profile grade, again, because there's no external exams, uh, and most of your units, uh, it's basically it's pass uh, or not passed. Uh, you know, there's no an actual grade, an academic grade next to it. So what the profile grade does is it determines how well you coped with it, with all your studies, with all your units. So what they're looking for at the universities is a minimum of three Bs. Um, if people achieve three Bs, then they should cope with the next level. Uh, which is first year at university. So again, you know, it has not been a problem so far for any of the students. Uh, they, they all work very hard uh, and um, do their best and they get good grades. So I'm really pleased. I'm always very proud of my students. Margaret, are you wanting to go over the student support services? Yeah, that's fine. Um, so just kind of really a bit of a whistle stop tour really of the support services. We do acknowledge it is a challenging course. Um, Argyll College is committed to support of the students um, and there's lots of support out there for you. Um, lots more information too, but just to kind of give you an idea uh, what we do, we have learning support. Um, this is around uh, addressing any kind of needs that people have. Uh, we recognise that everybody are, is an individual, um, that your journey is completely unique to yourself, your learning journey. Um, so a lot of answers can't be given in a kind of bulk answer. 
they are individual to you and especially around kind of bursary support um, we have extra financial support uh, available for care experienced people um, we have access for students to counsellors um, and for mental health support resources. We've got access for your study. Uh, we have access to library resources and we also have our uh, HISA, uh, which I will explain just in a minute. So about financial support, as I say, it is individual. Um, funding support does depend on uh, each student's individual financial situation. Um, Full-time students can apply for a bursary, um, which is which will help with living costs, um, and that fund is means tested. Um, we also have available uh, extra help for childcare and hardship costs. And I do stress it is an individual uh, situation uh, for each student. So early application for your uh, funding is important. Uh, your funding needs to be in place um, by kind of early July, August. It, it definitely has to be in place before the start of your course. And we do have uh, a bursary department uh, which again welcomes contact uh, for any questions. They do give full support to each student uh, and give you advice uh, on how to apply for the correct funding for yourself. Our learning support um, for anybody uh, who has any kind of learning difficult, difficulty or maybe a disability uh, that affects your learning. Um, we have our contact and again, they welcome contact from yourselves. Uh, you can also speak to your tutors. Um, the sooner we know that there is something that you need support for, um, the sooner we can get things into place for you. Uh, that doesn't mean that if you don't supply at the, um, apply at the beginning of the course, you can't apply further on. Um, so it could be that you, as you get into your learning, um, that you realise there's something um, that's kind of hindering uh, your learning. Then, you know, we are open to just to contact us. If we don't know about it, we can't help you. Um, if we know about it, we can. OK, and it's that kind of reassurance that there is uh, support available. Again, it's very individual. Um, if necessary and it's relevant, then the support plan is agreed with yourself. Um, and we identify different ways to uh, support you and maybe some software or equipment uh, that we can loan you that will be helpful. And just about our HISA. So HISA is the Highlands and Islands Students Association um, that represents all higher and further education students across UHI uh, and its 13 partners, um, of which uh, Argyle College is one. So they can help you find support and advice. Uh, they follow up any issues uh, that maybe in general students are having. They all set up, also set up uh, events, clubs, associations, and we encourage um, participation with these. We have a class reps scheme, um, which enables students to provide feedback uh, to Argyle College. Um, and the college can then work to improve facilities for students, listening to the feedback um, through the uh, so basically the access to nursing course it's basically the first step to help you to achieve your goal to become either an adult a mental health a child or learning disability nurse it lasts one academic year there is no practical placement it is purely academic 
and Argyle College and Swap West they will provide you with all the necessary help and support to assist you throughout your studies. We're quite fortunate. The centre staff are absolutely brilliant. Okay, um, your teaching team, although I'm a little bit biased, are great too. But we know we can't do it alone. Uh, we work very closely with the centre staff, and they're fantastic support to students through these difficult times. And we all want you to succeed, isn't it? Is the message we want you to succeed? Yep. Definitely. So we're going to have this time now um, to give you an opportunity to ask us any questions.